In this episode of Growing Your Sense of Self Through Self-Defense, I'm going to talk about health and its relationship with the sense of self. And what do we mean by health? Well, the dictionary definition, and one that I think most people uh, use, is that health is the absence of illness or injury. Now, that's a negative definition, tells you what health isn't, and says if you're, tells you what unhealth is, illness, injury, and if you're not that, then you must have health. But health isn't binary like that. And people in the healthcare uh, industry, they have three definitions. They don't use that, but they use other definitions of health as well. So uh, another one that they use is that health is the adequate coping of all demands of daily life. Now that's a positive definition, and it allows for, for instance, uh, a person with a permanent disability to still be considered healthy because they have adequate coping uh, of all the demands of uh, daily life. But it uses some fuzzy terms in terms of adequate coping and demands of daily life. Those vary. They vary by individuals and they vary for an individual over time. If, for instance, you all of a sudden took on responsibility for taking care of a, um, a, a parent who was getting elderly or, or a, a child who was ill, on top of what other demands you had in daily life, you may be, there may be uh, some things that get left out. You didn't get unhealthy during that time when you were having to take on extra responsibilities, but perhaps you didn't get them all met to the level that was adequate as, as before. The third definition they use in the, in the healthcare field is that, uh, that health is balance or equilibrium within the person and between the person and their social and physical environment. Now that's a better definition than the other two, but it's still lacking because an equilibrium can be a warped equilibrium. i give an example. So imagine uh, a Nazi SS guard working in a concentration camp. Now that person has internalized and, and wholeheartedly embraces the Nazis and National Socialism and they, they love Hitler and the, the Reich and they have this internal balance or equilibrium. Their social environment, their fellow guards may have the same attitudes, the same uh, world views as this individual and their work environment they're in balance with because they're doing Hitler's and the Reich's work. They're getting rid of the Jews and the gypsies and the homosexuals and people with deformities, etc. So they are in, I would say, a warped equilibrium, a warped balance. But I don't think too many people would look at that person, that individual, and say, that's a healthy person. Even though they have all three of those definitions, maybe the person has no physical injuries or uh, illnesses, and they, they are meeting their daily life's uh, chores adequately, uh, daily life's challenges, and they have this balance within themselves and with their environment. So there's something missing in terms of a, 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 a positive aspect of the balance that's, that's in that third definition. So I want to suggest a better definition in any of those three. And I'll say a healthy human is a person who can get their human needs met. So nature doesn't want individuals of a species to not be able to get their needs met. That makes for incapable or less capable individuals, which means the species becomes at risk of becoming extinct. So from a gene's perspective, it's not good to not be able to meet your needs. So, and needs are necessities. If you don't have a need met, you either die if it's a survival need or become less healthy. That's what a need is. That's what the definition here of health is. You're capable of getting your needs met. Now, what are the needs that humans have? Well, we have the, the normal animal needs. We need air, food, water. We need uh, some shelter or a sense of security. We have, uh, because we are not only social animals, but we are self-aware social animals, we have needs for community, of being accepted within a community, of being thought well of or felt well about uh, 
by the other members of the community, to be esteemed and loved by others in the community. Now, in order to accept that, to have the sense of that need being met, we have to first esteem and love ourselves. For example, if, if I'm five foot six and I want to be seen as a tall person, maybe I put lifts in my shoes or I stand on my tippy toes because I want to project more tallness than I have. If people then tell me, you know, man, you're really tall. I really think you're a tall person and, and I get those kinds of feedback from people. Even at 5'8", five, 5'9", five, whatever the lifts can do to me, I still don't feel tall. I still don't think I'm tall. So I'm going to look at people giving me strokes for being tall uh, as either I've deceived them or they're trying to deceive me. Now, when it comes to the self-esteem, self-love, if I don't feel, if I don't esteem myself, think highly of myself, I don't feel highly about myself, I don't love myself, when other people tell me how they esteem and love me, it, it don't mean nothing. It means either I'm deceiving them by the way I'm acting, so they want to esteem and love me, or they're trying to deceive me. And what happens to my sense of self when I'm being lied to or I'm lying, deceiving others, it goes down. So that's a linchpin of health. Yes, we need the survival needs met, the security needs met, but what this program does is focusing on growing the sense of self, your self-esteem, your self-love, on which esteem and love of others rests. So to grow your sense of self is to grow your health. So earlier in this program, I, I, and on, my, on the website, I talk about the traits, the characteristics of a person with a strong sense of self, characteristics of a person with a low sense of self. And what I want to do now is I want to go through the, the traits, the characteristics of a person with a strong sense of self. And this is, uh, sense of self is not a binary, it's a continuum. So this is a person with sort of super strong sense of self. And I give you a bunch of these traits. And I would like you to think about if you knew this person, knew a person like this, how healthy would you judge them to be? Would you say, well, that's a healthy person or not? So here are these traits. How do they feel about themselves? They're comfortable in their own skin. They have a lot of energy. They feel empowered, capable. They're unafraid of others' perceptions of them, and they're able to laugh at themselves. They're independent, creative, and a critical thinker, and they like to exercise their own beliefs, even under challenge. They seek win-win, seeing compromise as a win-lose, and they're okay if people don't agree with them. They don't have to compel them to agree. They have a calm and relaxed inner state, cool under pressure, and they accept and embrace all emotions. I've talked about this in an earlier uh, episode, because that's what it is to be part of fully human. How do they think about themselves? Well, they're positive and they're optimistic. They are confident, flexible. They are accepting of reality, even what might be considered unpleasant realities. They're able to act independently, and they do accept criticism. How do they present themselves to others? Well, they're open and they're honest. They have humility. They are warm, engaged, and responsive. When they speak, they are using language to convey truth and reason, to persuade others. They seek to understand others before they share their understanding. They acknowledge when they make mistakes and they accept responsibility for them. And they readily give credit to others. They're rational, have high integrity, so that their actions and their beliefs, their stated beliefs, are aligned. And they are at ease under pressure. How do they perceive others? They see each person as a un unique individual. And they have a unique set of skills and desires and motivations. They see them as capable and empowered, not as victims. They find joy in their success. And they are confident when they interact with others and respectful of others. What is their relationship with themselves? Well, they see that living is learning and there's boundless opportunities that they, they can take advantage of for growth and improving. They seek that personal improvement through their control of self, self-control and conduct, not control of others. They're curious, seek to learn, they're open to new ideas and different thoughts. They regularly and ac accurately assess themselves and what they believe. 
and they are willing and able to commit themselves to others, to tasks and to goals. In their relationships with others, they're drawn to other people with a high sense of self. They love easily and joyously. They respect other individuals as the center of their own universe. They are assertive and they invite others to also be assertive. They support and help people even if it's at their own expense. Have you ever heard of anyone healthier than that? I mean, that's optimal health. And notice I didn't talk about if the person, how big and fast the person was or how much endurance they had or how strong they were. Those are a relatively small aspect of health, even though we may tend to give it a lot of import. And I didn't talk about if this person had an illness or, dis or uh, injuries or permanent disability. If they have these characteristics, they are healthy. They're able to get their needs met, needs of self-love, self self-esteem, and accepting of the esteem and love of others. This program gives you the tools and information to grow your sense of self stronger, to grow healthier. That's not only a profound benefit to you, but to all of those in your life and to those who will come into your life. Thank you for your time. Kamsamida. Doodles.